Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, Rosh Hashanah Daf Chaf. We begin on Yotes Amit Bey's five lines from the bottom of the Amit. Shochulei Mar Ukva, the Bnei Yeshiva sent a message to Mar Ukva as follows. Adur HaSomach LaNisan LaOilam Chaser. The Adar, which leads into Chodesh Nisan. So whether it's a, a leap year, in which case it's the second Adar next to Nisan, or your typical year. So it's one other leading into Nisan. It's always going to be a Chodesh Chaser, one consisting of 29 days, with Rish Chodesh Nisan being on day 30. Tari Evan says perhaps, to make it easier for the Bnei Chutz Laaretz, although they have to keep two days Pesach, but they can uh, rely on the fact that uh, probably uh, Adar was a 29-day month, in which case they know which day is the real uh, Pesach, it's the, it's the first day that they keep, and the second day has certain leniencies when it comes to uh, halachas, when it comes to burying a mace, that a Yisrael can involve himself in burying a mace on the second day. In any case, there are some halachic ramifications to this concept, that Adar is always a chaser, a 29-day month, Reish Chedesh being on day 30. Masiv Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman has a kash from Mishnah, you say it's always a fixed amount of days, 29 days. The mission later says, Al shnei If the Adam who saw the new moon would like to come to Bezin to testify, they can be Mechal Shabbos. They could even go past the Tchum to arrive at Bezin. Al Nisan Val Tishri, only on the following two months, when they come testify regarding the new moon of Nisan or Tishri. The more later will discuss the significance of Nisan V'tishrei since uh, the Yomim Tevim are dependent on these Rashi Chadashim. In any case, they have to come rushing to Bezin to tell them about the sighting of the new moon. This makes sense if you say that Adar is sometimes a Malay, sometimes a Chaser, meaning Rish Chodesh Nisan can somehow, sometimes fall out on day 30 of Adar, making the Adar a Chaser, or Rish Chodesh Nisan can be established on day 31, which, in which case Adar is a 30-day month. So it's a fluctuating month. Then we understand Neshum Hachim Michalalina, and that's why we allow the Eden to be Michalal Shabbos to arrive at Bezn. Because otherwise, if they don't do that, they don't come rushing to Bezn on Shabbos to say that, look, we have the new moon right here, and make the Rish Chodesh today on day 30, we're going to postpone Rosh Chodesh to day 31. So they have to hurry up to tell us. It makes sense why we allow them to be Mechal Shabbos, so that we are Mechalish the Chodesh on the right day. Eloi Amris Lo'elam Chaser. But according to you, the other is always 29 days. I'm my Mechal Lilan. Why do they have to rush over to Bezden? Why do they have to come out of the, uh, the Tchum? Even without the Edom, we will still make Rosh Chodesh today, because... We know Adar is a 29-day month, followed by Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We show the mitzvah the Kaddish Al Pihari'ir. There's a mitzvah to use the Adam to rely on their testimony. Although we make our own calculations, we know that Adar should be a 29-day month, followed by Rosh Chodesh. But there's a mitzvah to do it based on the sighting of the Adam. Says Rashi on the top line, Eli Amrus Elam Chaser. If it's always a set, fixed, 29-day month, and even if Edom don't arrive, we'll still make Rosh Chodesh today on day 30. Why do we justify Chilul Shabbos for this purpose? The answer is, there is a mitzvah. Although Bezin don't need the Edom, but there is a mitzvah to listen to the Edom and be makalish the Chodesh based on that. Hashem tells Moshe, Kazeh Re'ev Kadesh. That's a drasha. Chodesh hazelachem, which means we should see it. We should be notified of a sighting of the new moon. And that's the mitzvah that Bezin is trying to fulfill by waiting for the Edom. And that's why the Edom rush over, even on Shabbos. We're going to learn it from a Pasuk, but they rush even on Shabbos. So that we can do the Kiddush according to the Re'iyah. So we thought we had a kasha on this concept. 
that other is always chaser, the Gemara answered the kash. Continues the Gemara in the second line. Ika de Amri, so in a different version, Amar of Nachman, Afanana Amitanina. Actually, we have a raya that other is always 29 days. The mission says, Al Shnei Chadashim, Michal in Asa Shabbos, Al Nisan Matishrei. The following two months, Edom will be Michal Shabbos to come to Bezin to tell him about the new moon. This works well if uh, there is always a missing month, a 29 day month. That explains That's why we allow them to be Shabbos. The mitzvah, because either way, come day 30, we're going to establish this day as day one of Nisan because uh, there is always 29 days. And that's why we say, rush over to Bez, be Shabbos. We want to fulfill the Kiddush HaChadish Al Piyoriya. If they don't arrive today, we're going to make today Rish Chadish anyway without them. We want to be Makayim the Mitzvah Al Piyoriya. Hurry up, be Machal Shabbos. Eli Amras Zimnin Malo Zimnin Chaser. But if ah, there is a fluctuating month, it's not a fixed month. Sometimes 29, sometimes 30. What's the rush? Amai Machal Why do we allow Chil Shabbos to take place here? Suppose they wait another day. They don't come on Shabbos. They wait till Sunday. No problem. We have the option of making other a 30-day month. We'll add another day right now. We'll do Kiddush HaKadosh tomorrow when they come. Doesn't this prove that other has to be 29 days? It's a fixed month. And therefore, well, if they don't come, we'll make Kiddush HaKadosh Today, regardless, without them, we don't want to miss that opportunity to be Mekadosh Chodesh al That's a raya to this point. Says the Gemara, not necessarily. It all depends on the calendar. You're right, if day 30 happens to fall out on Shabbos, then you could argue your point. That if um, Adar is not a fixed month, then just wait till tomorrow. Why do you have to be Mekadosh Shabbos? Wait till Sunday, day 31, which will be a chaydesh mu'ur. Then you're right, hachinami. You, you, you prove it, your point is proven. Hachem my skin, you know what we're speaking about? The ikla yem shleishem ve'echad b'shabbos. What happened was that day 31 of Adar falls out on Shabbos. In which case, <laughs> the Adam who saw the moon today on day 31 have to rush over to Bezden. There's no postponing. It's either today or never. You can't go past 31. Right? A month could either be 29 days or 30 days. If it's already day 31, it's going to be Reish Chodesh either way. And unless the Adam hurry up and our Machal Shabbos to come to Bezden to be made, you're going to miss the, miss the opportunity to be Mekadosh HaChadosh HaPuriyah, the mitzvah L'Kadosh HaLuriyah. You want to do the Kiddush HaChadosh based on the sighting of the Edom, which is a mitzvah, as we explained earlier. Kazei Rebbe Kadesh. So your is off. Perhaps other is a fluctuating entity, 29 days, 30 days. The mission is speaking in a case where day 31 falls out on Shabbos. Hurry up, Edom, be Mechal Shabbos. Otherwise, we're going to be Mekadosh today regardless of your arrival. And we're going to miss that opportunity to be Mekadosh HaPiriyah. That explains why they are Mechal Shabbos to arrive. We thought we had a riot from the Mishnah, one way or the other. Umar says it's no riot. Here comes Akash. Master Rav Kahana. How can you say Adar is always 29? Mishnah says, Kesha Migdash Kayim. When the Beis Migdash was standing, that would explain, that would justify Chil Shabbos throughout all the months of the year. The, the Edom would rush to Bezden. This way they know exactly on which day to bring the carbon Musaf of Rosh Chodesh, which is coming out on the right day based on the proper lunar calculations. And the proper zman. So when we say at the Edim Olu Mechalaf for Nisan Vetishri, that's bizman azet. We don't have the carbon. Musaf on Rosh Chodesh. There's no real tzorich for them to rush over. But during the Migdash, it justified every month. 
they were Machal Shabbos to come to Bezin to notify them that they saw the new, uh, the new moon, whether it was Nisan, Tishrei, Iyar, or Siv, doesn't matter. This will ensure that the Makr of the carbon of Rishchidosh in its proper time based on the and the proper calculations of the Levana, which is an enhanced way to bring the carbon Musaf in the right time. Now, says the Gemara, Umidikulu lav mishum de mitzvah lakalash al The fact that we see here in the Mishnah that eh, when the Midrash was standing, why were they Michal Shabbos? We said because we want it to happen in the right time. We want the Karbanit to be brought in the proper time based on the uh, the proper Cheshben according to the uh, sighting of the new moon. Not because uh, there was just a, a mila, a, a, a benefit, an added uh, perk that they wanted to be Mekadish not on their own calculation but based on the fact that they saw the Adam. The fact that the Adam saw the moon. It doesn't seem that way from the Mishnah. It seems from the Mishnah that if the Aden don't arrive today, they will be mark of the Karbanis not in a way that was aligned with the proper Zmanim. And that was the purpose of the Aden coming in on Shabbos. So that the Karbanis are brought in their proper time, based on the proper and the real accurate sightings of the moon and the Zmanim of the Levana. If that's the case, Nisan Vetishri Nami. Lav Mishum de Mitzvah the Kadesh Apparently, when the Mishnah speaks about nowadays, when the Edom were no longer Mechal Shabbos for all the other months, the only thing that was left was Nisan Vatishrei, and we assume now that it's based on the same way of thinking. It's based on the same reason. There's the same underlying principle behind everything, behind the Edom being Mechal Shabbos to arrive at Bezdin. You know what the principle is? To do things with man in the proper time, based on the signing of the new moon. We want Rosh Chodesh to be established in the right time, by Nisan Vatishrei. We want the, the May Adam, the Yom Tevim, that are dependent on the Rosh Chodeshim of Nisan Vatishrei to be established and observed in the right time, based on the uh, proper uh, calculations and sightings of the new moon. That was the point of the Mishnah. That was the point of Yom Chal Shabbos. Not that you would do it um, regardless of the Edom's arrival, just you want to do it out pure to be Mekayim Da Mitzvah. No, it seems clear from the Mishnah. The point of the Edom was to add accuracy to the whole system during the Zman Amidash so that the curb Musaf is brought in its right time, which otherwise wouldn't happen if the Edom wouldn't arrive in the right time. We wouldn't know when to make the uh, Rosh Chaydish. And likewise, with Zman Azvet, when we say Edom Mokhal, Funis and Vetishrei, is to ensure that the Rosh Hashim and those Yom Tov in those two months will be established in the right proper time. That's what it seems in the Mishnah. Okay, how does it pertain to us? Okay, so if Adar is sometimes a Malay, sometimes a Chaser, that explains Mishnah Machim Chalilun. That's why the Edna to Machal Shab is to come to tell us exactly how to establish Rosh Hashim. We don't know. Is Adar a 29 day month? A 30 day month? So the coming of the Edom on Shabbos will ensure a properly timed Rosh Chodesh Nisan, a properly timed Pesach. Eli Amr's Elam Chasab, but according to you that other is always 29 days. Then either way we're going to make Rosh Chodesh at the day, at day 30. Am I Mechal Lilan? So what's the point of Mechal Shabbos? Am I Mechal Lilan? It doesn't just have Mechal Shabbos. Again, if the point is to ensure proper timing, well, they have that anyways. If other is always 29 days, it's a fixed month, it's a fixed, non fluctuating entity. So, why would the Eden Machal Shabbos tell us about the new moon in honor of Rosh Nisan? We don't need them to come. We, we can figure it out on our own. It's always going to be a 29 day other. To Yufta. Indeed, this is a refutation of this concept. Apparently, no, other was a fluctuating entity. Oh, no, 29, 30. And that explains why the Mishnah says, Edom will have to be Mechal Shabbos to tell us about Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Rosh Chodesh Tisrei, 
This way we can ensure a proper arrangement, a proper timing when it comes to those months which the um, which are the catalyst for the upcoming Yom Tov. So we can be masakin the Mayadam Bismanon. Rashi says Bismanon Lafid told us Halavana based on the uh, revolutions and orbitings of the Levana. Indeed, this is a kasha a refutation of this concept. So the Gemara proposed a concept where Adar was always a fixed 29 day month. We had a kasha, we had a raya, and the bottom line is we have a tiyufta on this concept. Kiyasa Ula and Ula came to Babel. Omar he told him like this El. You meant to know that in Eretz this year they decided to add a day to El. It was a 30 day month, which is something unusual, but they had to do it for the reasons we're going to mention soon. Amar Ula, and Ula continued to say, Yadi chavrin Do uh, my friends here on Bavl understand and appreciate <laughs> what great favor we in Eretz Yisrael did on their behalf by adding a month to El, by pushing the Yom Tevim a day forward? says, well, my Tevusa, what's the big deal? What's the Tevim here? Two reasons. Ula Amar, Mishum Yerukaya. To enable the um, vegetables to maintain their freshness. Which means that if Yom Tev happens to fall out on a Friday or a Sunday, so the vegetables picked before the two day Yom Tov Shabbos sequence will become unfresh by the time a second day comes around. So, by rearranging the month, by adding a day to L, by pushing Yom Tov a day forward, you can create a day, a cushion period between Yom Tov and Shabbos to allow picking fresh vegetables for the sake of Yom Tov. Rabbi Achabar Chanina Omar Mishmah to maintain the honor, the respect for the Mason. For instance, if Yom Kippur was meant to fall out on a Friday or on a Sunday, you'll have a mace lying for two days without burial. That's a bazillion mace. So by rearranging these months, they created a gap between Yom Tov and Shabbos, between Yom Kippur and Shabbos, to enable proper uh, kvura of the mace. My is there any difference between the time of Yerokes or the time of Mason? Yom Kippur there would be a difference in the following case. Yom Kippurim Shechaliyas Achar Shabbos. Suppose Yom Kippur falls out on a Sunday. Now we'll have enough Kamina. Man da'ar Mishum Meisaya. Ma'abrinan. If you hold of the time of Meis, then we have to be Ma'abr El. We have to rearrange the months. So Yom Kippur is no longer on a Sunday. Rather, it's pushed a day forward on a Monday. You have a day in between Yom Kippur and Shabbos. So the Meis doesn't lie around for two days. Uman da'ar Mishum Yerukaya. But according to the reason of your rockies of vegetables, it doesn't apply here. Why? When does he have to eat those vegetables? Lorta, Matsyam Kippur. Not having it on Yom Kippur. Well, Lorta, Matsyam Kippur at night. Toruch, Umaisi. Go ahead and pick some fresh vegetables. So this doesn't justify doing Ibur, Chaydish. Because I'll just pick fresh vegetables, Matsyam Yom Kippur. So the reason of mace applies, but not your rockies. Well, the one who proposed the time of Yeraka is fine, that doesn't apply, but the time of May still applies. That's a valid, legitimate reason. That also would justify Ibura Chaydish. So even if the Yeraka is not a concern, but the Mace is, so this can't be an Afkimina. Why wouldn't he hold up the time of Mace? Says more, you're right. In this case, all agree you do Ibura Chaydish. To allow proper tending of a mace. Ela ikibinayu, the nafkimunu would be in a case of yomtiv. Ha samach l'shabbos. If you have sukkahs falling out next to Shabbos, beim nefanea, whether on a Friday, beim lacharea, or after Shabbos on a Sunday, man do amar mishimir kaya mabrinan. The one who gave the reason for the vegetables. Well, in this case, we have to do ibrachaydish to push Shabbos and yomtiv apart. So you don't have two consecutive days where your vegetables will wilt and become unfresh. Uman the Aram Mishum Meisaya. But the one who said the reason is because of the mace. Well, that's not a reason to make Ibar Achidish in this case. Efsher Ba'amami. Even if you have a Yom Tov and a Shabbos next to each other, the Allah is 
We learned this in Masechah Spetz at Avav. You can have a non-Jew tend to a mace on Yom Tov, even on Yom Tov Rishon. So a mace would not be a concern in this case. So your rockets are concerned, but not a mace. Says more the same kasha. I understand that this mandamer proposed, suggested the reason of mace, but why wouldn't he hold up the reason of uh, Yerakis? Why isn't that a concern? So mace can be taken care of, but the Yerakis will become unfresh. He goes, that's not a concern. Just dip it back into warm water, refresh the vegetables. So bottom line is, Ula tells us they did a favor to the Bnei Bavel by extending El, by rearranging the next month so that the, um, the Shabbos, the Yom Kippur, the uh, Yom Tev are rearranged in a way that they don't pose a concern for uh, mason and unfresh vegetables. The bottom line is we have a case of an Afkamina between both reasons. When the Yom Tev falls out next to Shabbos, the mace would not be a concern because the Goyim can take care of the mace at that point, but the vegetables would be a concern. Uh, but uh, that's only according to that mandama. The other mandama doesn't hold the vegetable concern because he says you can f- refresh it by soaking it in warm water. Iyachi says to him, if that's the case, why does Ula say, this is a great favor for the Bnei Bavl. Why only for us in Bavl? Isn't it beneficial for everybody? Even in Eretz Even in Eretz Yisrael, they benefit from this rearrangement of the month. No, says the Gemara, for us in Bavl, which is a low-lying, humid area, Chavil Lun Alma. It's low-lying, it's humid, it's warm, in which case the mace can decompose, the, the vegetables get on fresh. And therefore, it was a favor for us. Well, they do, as opposed to the Bnei show live uh, between the mountains. It's airy. Chavil Luhu Alma, it's less warm and humid, and therefore, these concerns don't apply. So, in conclusion, Ula says, there would be Ma'aber Chodesh El, there would push Rosh Chodesh Tishrei a day forward for these various uh, Tzrachim, these needs, as we mentioned. Aini, is that so that you could rearrange your months according to uh, your wishes, according to the community's needs? Vatani Rabbi Barshmo. Rabbi Barshmo tells us. Sounds like a Bryce. Yo, Chokeshem Shema Abren Sashon Lutzerich. Perhaps, just as we know, you can establish a Shonomu Beres, a leap year. Lutzerich, for various reasons. Discussed in the Gemara Sanhedrin. The same thing would apply to a leap month as well. You can go and add a month, uh, a day to your month to address various needs. Is that so? No. Where we learn from there. You see it? Be Makadish accordingly. You can't just ignore the, um, the new moon. Once you have a new moon, that's it. You have to be Makadish Rosh Chodesh. You can't just. Uh, push it off, postpone it a day. Amar Rava. It depends what you're trying to do. Like Kasha. The answer is Kan la Abre. If you're trying to be my Abre the Chodesh, add a day, postpone Rosh Chodesh, go ahead, you can do that. If there is a, a need to do so. Because, the Varshim explained, there were various considerations and calculations employed in Kiddush HaChodesh, in Ibra Shana. One was calculation based lunar and solar based and one was all kinds of other all kinds of other um, factors factor into the equation as long as the uh, general arrangement of the year works out doesn't have the authority the ability to tweak and rearrange certain months based on certain community needs as we mentioned here so la abroy they can do they can add a date to el for the yurukaya for the messiah kanakachay but to be makadish earlier that they can't and that's what the Bryson meant. You can't advance Rosh Chodesh a day before it really, it's really meant to be. The Bryson means like this. Perhaps you may think, just as you can be Ma'aber, like an Ishim will bear, expectant woman, you can add to the year, make a leap year. Add to the month, make a leap month, a 30 day month, to address various needs. Perhaps. You can be a Kaddish to Chodesh, which means to advance it a day earlier, to have a Chodesh established before it's really meant to be. 
Perhaps you can do that? No. And we learn from here, Rav Kadesh. Rashi says, Reit Chila. First, take a look at the moon, and then be Makadish. You can't just make Rish Chodesh at whim. Well, today's Rish Chodesh, even though you know the moon will only be seen tomorrow, that doesn't work. But to postpone, to push off a day, that you can do. That explains Ula. They postponed Elul. They added a day to Elul in order to address various needs of Mace and Yerik. As he tells us, they can manipulate, they can intimidate the Edom. Chodesh in the Gemara is generally referenced to the new moon. Right? When the, uh, uh, the new moon was, was sighted. So if the Edom happened to see the new moon, which was seen in its right time, they can be ma'ayim, they can shush them up. They can scare them off, so to speak. We don't want to hear from you today. Even though it was a chodesh shenir bezmanay, la'abri, if the point is to be ma'abra, to postpone for whatever reason, they can do that. Ve'ein ma'ayim in ala edim, ala chodesh shaloy nir bezmanay l'kachi. But in the reverse, it doesn't work. They can't force the edim to testify that they saw the new moon shaloy bezmanay. To be makadosh in advance, a day earlier. Even though we're coming to address various community needs. And perhaps it's not called a Shekhar because Bezin did have the authority to arrange the months according to what they saw fit, what they saw was necessary. As long as the total arrangement, the end of the day of the, uh, of the year, will work out. All kinds of calculations. The Gemara later speaks about Soida Ibur. There was a whole price of all kinds of uh, hints and, and formulas and calculations on top of the ones we mentioned here and the modern Sanhedrin speaks about all kinds of other considerations so there would be room perhaps to think that Bezin could advance the Rosh Chodesh by a day if they saw fit no you can't do that you could postpone but you can't advance okay so that's the bottom line Ula wasn't trying to advance he was just postponing and that's, that's legal Any, is that so? That you're not meant to advance. <laughs> he sent a message to Rabbi Ami. Have you heard You meant to know. She called Yamov. Shor Biyechen. All throughout Rabbi Yechen's life. How you mean? Who teaches as follows? Yes, Ma'aimen ala Edem ala Chodesh. They would force the Edem. They would intimidate them. They would twist their arms to be made that they saw the new moon. Even though it was not yet seen in its right time, to come and testify they saw it. Even though they didn't see it, they should go and say that they saw it. So apparently advancing the month is also legitimate, also legal. Amar Abayi depends which months. Like Kasha, the answer is, If it's Nisan, it's Tishrei, where the Yom Toim are dependent on those Rashi Chadashim, then if the peasants saw a need, to advance it by a day, they, they went ahead and they were ma'ayim on the Edom to do so. Ha b'shar yarchi, as opposed to other uh, we, other months, other Rosh Chadashim, we wouldn't do that. So, Nisan Tishrei was crucial. The Yom Tov more depend on those days. So even advancing the Rosh Chodesh by a day was an accepted practice, but not typically. So according to this approach in the Gemara, postponement was always Okay, advancing Dafka by Nisan Matishri. Rava Amar, he says like this There's going to be a Shita which does not allow manipulation whatsoever. <laughs> the calendar always follows a set, standard, consistent formula 30 day month, 29 day month, 30 day month, 29 day month, Malay Chaser, Malay Chaser. We don't tweak, we don't rearrange, ever. And that's what the Bryce earlier meant. Rabbi Shmuel brought a pasuk, "Chodesh Zelachem, Kazeirei Vekadesh." Have to remain uh, loyal to the uh, signing of the moon. That's the sheet of Achirim. Rav Amar Hod Tani Rav Bar Shmuel that we don't tweak the month at all, postpone or advance. Achirim, a sheet as Achirim. We don't pass on Achirim. The signing Achirim Oimrim. A year is very predictable. You know how many days there are going to be between 
Shavuos this year and Shavuos next year. Ve'ein ben Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah. You know how many days between this year Rosh Hashanah and next year? Ela Dalid Yamim Bavad. Exactly four days. So Shavuos this year is on a Sunday. Next year it's going to be on a Thursday. Rosh Hashanah this year is on a Monday. Next year on a Friday. You know why? A year consists of exactly 354 days divided by weeks, divided by seven, gives you 50 weeks plus four days discrepancy. So next year's event gets pushed forward four days down the week. Very predictable. Very consistent. If it happened to be a leap year, you end up with a five-day difference because the extra month is 29 days. Take out four weeks. So it's 28 days off. You're left with one day discrepancies. That adds one day to the loose number that we had earlier. Instead of four days difference, it's five day difference between this year and next. That's it. So according to them, there's no advancement, no postponement. And that was the price of Rabbi Rashmo. But according to us, you go ahead, go ahead and advance and postpone according to the Tzorich of the Klau. Here comes a third cheetah. Rav Dimi Minardo Masni Ifcha. He learned the halacha the other way around. You can go ahead and advance, but not postpone. You can force the Edom. Even if they didn't see the Chodesh. It's still pre mailad We can do it Lekatshe. To allow Kiddush HaChodesh a day earlier. If they saw need, they saw fit. But to be ma'ayim, to intimidate the Edom, to be made regarding the Chodesh that they saw Bismani, shash them up and say, no, no, wait till tomorrow. Elaborate to create a Chodesh Mu'ubar, a leap month, a 30 day month. We don't do that. You know why? My time. Hi, Mirsik is Shikra. When the Chodesh was seen in its right time, and they're going to shush them up perhaps other people saw the moon Mexican shikra looks like falsehood what's going on here where's the basdin we don't want to create a shikra impression so you can't postpone you can't procrastinate highly Mexican shikra as opposed to advancing doesn't appear like falsehood because people will just say look I haven't noticed the new moon yet it happens not everybody sees the new <laughs> the new sliver so advancement of the Chodesh is acceptable, but not postponement. So we have three shitas. According to the first shita, postponement, postponement is an accepted practice. Advancement, only in Nisan Vatishrei, because of the, uh, the importance of those months. According to Achirim, we don't postpone or advance. According to the most recent shita, postponement is Mexican Shikra. Advancement is acceptable. Omar Shmuel, Shmuel was an expert in astronomy. He says like this, I can establish a formula, a system which can be followed by all those communities, those outlying communities in Gullahs. They can follow this formula and figure out their Rashi Chadashim and their Yom Taibim without receiving word from the Adim, from Bezdin. I can help them out and figure it all out for them. Amalei Abba. So Abba, that was his name. He turned to Shmuel. And Abba was Avua, the Rabbi Simloi, who was Rabbi Simloi's father, and he turned to Shmuel, Lishmuel. Really? You can do that? That's pretty impressive. Yoda Mar. Uh, Mar, uh, Master, are you familiar with the following uh, concept? Hi Milsa, this uh, seemingly obscure passage found in the Brysa, the Sanya beside the Iber. Rashi says it was a Brysa called Soy the Iber, which had very Muslim, all kind of cryptic formulas which form the basis for the concept of Ibra Shona, Ibra Chodesh. Are you familiar with the following statement? It depends when the Moilad occurs. Before or after Chatzos, Moilad is the time when the Levana gets a bit offset. You get pushed away, offline from the sun. So you have the sun and the moon, which is pretty much in line with the sun at the end of the month. That's why you don't see anything of that moon because the lit portion is facing the sun. And during Moilad, what happens is there's an offset. The moon pulls away, lags behind the sun. 
Because right? the moon is revolving around the world. So the moon moves away, and you start seeing a bit, a little sliver of that moon being lit up by the sun. As the month continues, the moon lags and lags and lags away until it goes always to the other side and the sun and the moon are the opposites of the world. In any case, Bryson speaks about the Meila, the current before Efta Chatzais. You know what that means? Noilat Kaidim Chatzais or Noilat Acha Chatzais. There's a difference between if the Noilat is before Efta Chatzais. Are you familiar with that? Could you explain that to me? Amalei Shmo responds, Loi, actually, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not proficient with that halacha, with that formula. Amalei Sa Abba responds, Look, Midahol Yodamar. Well, if you don't understand what this is, Surely there are other things, other uh, factors, other equations, other formulas, which, which um, you don't either know, and uh, therefore uh, you shouldn't be involved in uh, establishing the the ibra shon ibra chodesh for the gullus. Uh, so what what exactly, indeed, does this mean? The, uh, Tomorrow, will explain for us. Rabzer went to Yisrael. We found the experts in Kiddush HaChodesh and Ibar HaShonam. So he learned some new things and he sent back to his friends in Babel. Shalach he sent them a couple of things. Firstly, Rish HaChodesh can only be established on a day which will include its night and its day. Meaning, let's say you saw the old moon the tail end of the of last year's last month's moon at the beginning of the night, that night and following day have been committed. They no longer can be used for the next month. Because the more someone explained for us that a, a, a Yom Tev, a Rish Chodesh, encompasses day and night as one unit. And therefore, it only works if the entire unit, night and day, are considered part of the new month. That's number one. Number two, Remember that cryptic statement regarding Noilad before Efta Chatzois? I'll tell you what it means. The statement quoted by Abba, who was Avu, the father of the Rabbi Simloi, regarding Noilad before Efta Chatzois, you know what that means? We want to calculate the Moilad Halavana when it occurred. If it's Noilad Kaidim Chatzois, we know for a fact that the birth, so to speak, of the new moon. The point in time where you can start seeing a tiny sliver of that moon. If it happened before Chatzois, then Biodua Shinira Samach Lashkia Then you know for a fact that it could have been sighted before Shkia. So we'll explain what this means. That's if it happened before Chatzois. But Noilad Kadim Chatzois. Suppose in Noilad did not occur before Chatzois, then you know for a fact Biodua Shalinira Samach Lashkia You could not conceivably have noticed that. Sliver of new moon before Shkir. What does this mean? Say we're working with the Zman HaMoyled in Eretz Yisrael. In fact, that's what we follow. When we speak about the Moyled is going to be on Tuesday, this and this time, we mean that the first time we're going to see the moon anywhere in the world is going to take place on Tuesday, this and this time in Eretz Yisrael. Meaning when it's this time in Eretz Yisrael, the Moyled will occur somewhere in the world. So it's Eretz Yisrael based so let's work with Eretz Yisrael. You're in Eretz Yisrael now. And we're speaking about the moil of the current before Chatzos. Now, you have to know one thing. It's too small to see at that, at that point. The sliver is just too tiny and undiscernible. And also blinded by the sun. So the first six hours, you will not see anything. Even though there was a moil. Technically, the moon and sun were offset a bit. They're not directly facing each other. So there was some sort of movement, but the sliver is too small to be noticed, and you'll have to wait at least six hours. So basically, the last six hours of the old moon, of the previous month, nothing to see. The new, the moon, first six hours, nothing to see. Says the Gemara. Let's hear Nerzis Shroll. It's Chatzais. Sun is up in the sky, midpoint. And... The moon, right? Sun, moon. And the moon started lagging behind the sun. That's the point of Moilat. So it's offset, offset. You can start seeing, but you don't actually see it. But technically, it's been offset, and there is some sliver there. 
If this happens, you can be sure that you'll notice the new moon before Shkia. Six hours later, as soon as the sun dips down, there's Shkia. Of course, it's not the sun dipping, it's the earth moving, but we're speaking from our perception, the way we think, we, we, think, we see things uh, from here on earth. So it looks like the sun just set, and the moon lagging behind it will be visible for a short moment before Shkia, and then it follows down and disappears behind the earth until the next morning. Because right? the moon is actually revolving around the earth. And at the end of the month, it sort of lines up with the sun and then pulls away. So again, if the nail occurs before Chatzais, six hours later, the moon pulls back, pulls back, pulls back enough, it can actually see it at the point of Shkia, which is six hours later. For six hours, you can't see it. But six hours later, at the point of Shkia, the sun disappears, it gets dark, and you notice that sliver of the moon, and then it disappears. So again, if you know the moil took place before Chatzois, then you know for sure that you can notice that moon before Shkia. For a short moment before Shkia. But suppose you know according to calculations that the moil was not before Chatzois, was on or after Chatzois, then you can't possibly notice that new moon on that day because you can't notice for the first six hours. You'll know for a fact that that moon was not noticed. Before Shkia. Still too early, still too young, too small. What's the point of knowing this? If you want to contradict the Adam, you know for a fact that the Mulad was too late in the day to be noticed that day. And the Adam said, Oh, we saw it in that day. You know they're speaking falsehood. So it's an important formula to know. And that's the secret behind that statement. It can be seen today. It cannot be seen today. Furthermore, says Reb I'll teach you some more regarding Kiddush HaKadosh. Amar Reb Zeir, Amar Reb Nachman. Chof Dal Shoi Michsesiyara. You meant to know that between old and new moon, there is a period of 24 hours where the moon is not seen at all. Nothing. Now, Sure, it's a 24-hour total, but which part of that 24 hours belongs to the old moon? In which case, the old moon is not visible. And which part belongs to the new moon? Well, it depends on your vantage point. It depends where you're living. Will be done for us in Bavel, which is more to the east of Eretz Yisrael. Shismiatikta. We will not notice the last six hours of the old moon. The Tamni Shemichalito, nor 18 hours of the new moon. Totally invisible for us. do for those in Eretz Yisrael, or more to the west of Babel, Shismachanta, they'll notice. They'll, they won't notice six hours of the beginning of the new moon, the Tam Nesrima Tikta, and 18 last hours of the old moon. So we'll explain what this is. Again, the man of Kimina was the point of knowing this. Amar Vashi, like Chushi Sahadi, to contradict the Adam. Let's say the Adam say, you know, we saw the old moon. And the new moon within 24 hours of each other is speaking falsehood. It's impossible. Now, there are several ways to explain Al Gamar. The Ben Ari takes a simple approach as follows. We mentioned that we're going to focus on the Moilad as per Eretz Raw time. Let's pick the standard case that we mentioned earlier. Moilad takes place before Chatzois, Eretz Raw time. So, when it's Raw, it's midday. The um, sun is up in the air, and the Levana is moving away gradually, backing away from the sun, creating that Moilad effect right before Chatzais. Okay? So for the fellow in Eretz Yisrael, he'll have to wait six hours until the moon blags enough, pulls away at the point of Shkia, six hours later, he'll notice the moon for a short moment until it dips. That's for him. The fellow in Bubble will not notice that moon. You know why? Because he's more to the east. Let's say he's an hour ahead. Okay? Time zone wise, an hour ahead. So when the Mailad occurred in Eretz Yisrael, right before Chatzois, for him it was already 1 o'clock p.m. Okay? Now, before Shkia time in Eretz Yisrael, which is six hours later, the fellow in Eretz Yisrael can notice the moon, because it's already six hours, but the fellow in Babel already experienced the Shkia an hour ago, when the moon was still up here. Too close to be seen. It was too close to the sun. 
Right? It was only five hours after the Mailat. So Shkia and Bavel is an hour earlier. In which case, it's still too early to see that moon. It's only five hours old. He won't notice it until the next morning. When the sun rises, followed by the moon. So he won't notice it the first six, plus the whole night until sometime the next morning, which is about 18 hours. He'll be missing the first 18 hours of the new moon. So the fellow is just stroll, missed the first six hours. The fellow in Bavel, he missed that Shki opportunity, which happened too early for him. He'll miss that and the whole night, about 18 hours later, he'll first see the new moon. So the fellow in Eitz Yisrael misses the first six hours of the first of the new moon. The fellow in Bavel misses the first 18 hours. Right? Once Shkia happened, it's all the way on the other side of the earth. He won't see it until the next morning when it rises with the sun. That explains the new moon. What about how many hours you're missing of the old moon? Again, that depends where you're standing. The fellow in Eitz Yisrael, he's going to miss 18 hours, the last 18 hours of the old moon. Why? Again, why Eitz Yisrael? So it's Chatzoy, sun is up here, the moon is starting to get offset. Now, let's backtrack. What happened at sunrise, the beginning of that day? He couldn't see the moon, his fellow in Israel, because it was within six hours of the Mailat. You can't see a moon within six hours of the Mailat either way. Right? So he didn't notice it that morning, and the last time he noticed it was the previous evening. So he missed. 6 plus the previous 12. So that's 18 hours of the old moon. The last 18 hours he didn't see. So the fellow on his stroll misses the last 18 of the old and the first 6 of the new. The fellow on Bob on the other hand, he's an hour ahead. So the Moilub Shakur at Yisrael Chatzois was for him really already 1 p.m. So at sunrise in Babel it was still 7 hours before the Moilub. It was still visible for him. It was not yet within six hours of the moil. So the fellow in Bavel noticed that moon at sunrise. An hour later, he stopped seeing it because it was within six hours of the moil in Israel. So he misses the last six hours, but he noticed the moon right before six hours. He doesn't miss the last 18 of the old moon. He only misses six hours. So that's how we get our formula. The fellow in Bavel missed the last six hours of the old moon and the first 18 of the new moon. Right? The fellow went to stroll the other way around. He only missed the first six hours of the new moon, but 18 of the old moon. Again, very briefly, we're speaking about an Eretz Yisrael. The moil happened before Chatzois, Eretz Yisrael time. Okay, so the fellow went to stroll. We'll see that new moon right before Shkia, which is about six hours later. Right? But he didn't see it from morning to Chatzais, which was within six hours. Right? Because the moil happened right before Chatzais, too close to sunrise. So he missed it that six, plus the night before, because the moon was on the other side of the earth. So 18 of the last he missed, and six of the new. The fellow in Bavel, he's an hour ahead. So when we speak about the moil occurring before Chatzais, and it's for him it's already 1 p.m. So at sunrise, it was more than six hours to the moil. At sunrise in Bavel, it was seven hours to the moil. So you can see the new moon. So he wasn't missing the last 18 hour stretch. The only thing he missed was the last six hours of the old moon. Now when it comes to the new moon, which is only visible six hours later, so now it's a it's just perfect timing. It's right before Shkia. So you can notice it right before Shkia, but the fell in bubble for him, Shkia happened when the moon was still up in the air, an hour earlier, because he's an hour ahead. At that point, it was still too close to the sun. It was only five hours after the moon. So he missed that opportunity. I'll have to wait a whole night again. It's another 12 hours, about 18 hours in total. So that's what the Gemara means. Let's just see the words again. Let's just back up a few lines. Amar of Zero, Amar of Nachman, Chav Dal Shoy, Mirsi Sahar. You meant to know that typically the moon is invisible for a period of 24 hours between the old moon and the new moon. It all depends on proportion now. Who's going to be missing which part of the old, which part of the moon? New. What they done for us in Bavel? You're going to miss the last six hours of the old moon. And 18 of the new moon. They do the ones in the other way around. They'll, know, they'll miss the first six hours of the new moon. And 18 of the old. What's the point of knowing this formula? Contradict the Adam. Who may claim, well, we saw the old and the new within 24 hours. Impossible. There's always a 24 hour gap between the two moons. 
Let's go back to the halach we mentioned earlier. Amar Mar. Tzorach shehei layla b'yoy min ha-chadosh. Rosh Chodesh has to incorporate the previous night and the following day. You can't split apart the day. Menol, how do we know? Of two pesuk. Rabbi Yechon Amar, me'erev ad-erev. The fast of Yom Kippur begins me'erev the night before till the next night. So it's a full unit. A 24-hour unit. Yom Tov works like that. Rosh Chodesh works like that. It's one single unit. Mishlagish Amar, another pasuk ad yoyim ha'echad ve'esem nechodesh be'erev. Pasuk speaks about eating matzo on Pesach until day 21 of Nisan at night. So you have to finish the entire set of days, day and night, day and night. You can't split apart the days. A night and the following day is one unit. My benayu, is there any difference between this pasuk or that? Abayi Amar, no. Mashmoiz dersh nik benayu. It's just a question of where to derive the concept from. But in Allah, it's all the same. Right? So if you see the old moon at the beginning of the night, that day has been cancelled. That day belongs to last month. You can't establish a shchidish on that day. Rav Amar, no, there is a difference. Chatzos lightly kibbenayu. Let's say they saw the moon at the beginning of the night, until Chatzos. Perhaps the first segment of a night, until Chatzos, sort of can relate to yesterday. It doesn't necessarily have to be committed to the following day, as we find by Matzah. The one who brings a riot from Yoyim Echad Ve'esum Nechodesh Be'erev, which is speaking about Matzah, take a look at Matzah. What happens there? You know, throughout Pesach, you don't have to eat Matzah, except for one time, the first night. Until Chatzos, the mitzvah chilas matzah, which is sort of related to the Karm Pesa, a matzah so very mechlu, apparently it relates back to the previous day, which is Zman Shechitas Pesach, which extends sort of into the following night, you know, the by Kachim. The Laila is Hulach Achayim, which means that you can eat a Karm, the Yom Shechita, and the following night. So the fact that the Torah is Mitzava Astit Matzah on the first night. And, and it's, it sounds like it's an association with the Karim Pesach. Matzah is a yechluhu. Karim Pesach is eaten with matzah. So, until Chatzos, it still relates to the previous day. It's still the Zman of the Pesach. And therefore, according to this approach, or Shlakish's approach, even if the new moon was, the old moon was still seen at night, but it was still till Chatzos, it still relates to yesterday and doesn't interfere with tomorrow being Rosh Chodesh, as opposed to the other Pesach, Me'erev Ad'erev. Yom Kippur starts beginning of the night until the next night. The whole night belongs to tomorrow. We can't split apart the night. Amr um, Abzera, here comes another lacha. The name of Abzera regarding Kiddush Achayish. Amr um, Abzera, Amr um, Nachman, calls Sveika. Whenever the Bnei Chutzlars have a suffolk, they make Sveika the Yom, they observe two days Yom Tov. It's always like Kamei Shadinan. We go forward. Right, so let's say they're not sure. When Rosh Chodesh Nisan was established, so they have to start counting. One, two, three, from what day? Well, they have to take account, uh, take into account all possibilities. Suppose Adar was a 29-day month, and then came Rosh Chodesh. That becomes day one, next day, day two, and day 15 is Pesach, but day 16 is also Pesach. Maybe uh, Adar was a 30-day month. Rosh Chodesh was a day further. So it's always going to be Likame going forward. Called the suffix always applies a day forward. Lememer, what does he mean? The chameser, the shitzer, 15 and 16 of Dinan we observe. 15 and 16 of Nisan are considered Pesach, just to account for all possibilities. A 29 day other, a 30 day other. But we never go back. Our base of Dinan, we don't observe day 14 of Nisan as Pesach. Why would you? Let's be concerned about day 14 as well. Why? Perhaps there were two months in a row that consisted of 29 days. So in the case of Sukkot, how do you know that it's either today or tomorrow? Maybe it's also yesterday. Maybe Av and El were both 29 day months, in which case you have to start a day back. Maybe that happened. Says more, it's not probable. Tre when there are two missing months in a row, that's big news. It's unusual. Call the Islu. It makes it makes waves. They would have heard about it. They would have heard that um, not only Thomas was a missing month, as per uh, the the Seder Thomas is generally missing. 
generally a 29 day month. And if they would have done Tamas and of 29 days, they would have heard about it because there's ample time for that news to arrive. We're speaking about the middle of Tishrei. They would have found out that Av was a 29 day month, in which case Rosh Chodesh El was established on day 30. They would have found out that two months in a row is something unusual. And there's also enough time for that to arrive, for that news to have arrived and be received by Bnei Golis. And therefore, we're never concerned about that possibility that perhaps we have to uh, backtrack a day. That's not part of the uh, equation here. The only suffolk we do have it is regarding the most recent Rosh Chodesh. So it's regarding Sukkot, we have to start asking regarding Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. When was it? How long was El? Was 29? Was it 30? So Yom Tov is either today, if it was a 29 day month, or tomorrow, if El was a 30 day month. So that's why Yom Tov Sukkot falls out on day 15 or day 16, but it's never, it's never going to apply to day 14. Okay, so what did we learn today? We started regarding Chodesh Adar. There was a sheet in the Gemara that Adar is always 29 days, and the Gemara made a Tuyufta, refuted that uh, precept. The Gemara spoke about uh, a possibility of adding a day or deducting a day from the month based on the Tzorich of the Messiah of the Erkaya. And the commercial conclusion was that there were really two reasons, two separate reasons. What would be the Nafkamina between Mesai being concerned about the May spoiling or the Yerek spoiling? Nafkamina would be if Yanto and Shabbos fall out next to each other. So the May's concern doesn't apply because even if there was a mace on Yamtiv, a guy could take care of him, but the Yerek, the vegetable concern does apply. The other Shita doesn't agree because he says he could just refresh it by soaking in hot water. So when indeed do we add or subtract? For these purposes, let's say, according to Shita Zacherim, we never do so. According to another Shita in the Gemara, postponement is allowed, but advancement is only allowed uh, in special circumstances, for instance, which Chodesh Nisan and Tishrei, or Shdi Yom Tevim are dependent upon. According to another Shita, advancement is mutter, but not postponement. Mechzik is shukr, pairs like falsehood when people start noticing the new moon and there's no new month. Reb Zayda told us some things regarding Kedusha Chodesh, actually four things. Firstly, the Laila belongs to the following day, and Rosh Chodesh has to be a unit that incorporates the previous night as well. Some say, well, until Chatzais, uh, that does not have to be included. He spoke about the fact that the last six hours and first six hours of the moon is totally invisible. In fact, there is a 24-hour gap for any uh, given individual where he will not see that moon, well, it depends where you are, Bavla and Yisrael, and the proportions are based accordingly. And we learned that Sveik the Yom is always going to be 15 and 16 of Nisan, 15 and 16 of Tishrei, but never a day earlier. Cult of two and much aslach.